chlorophyll has the same structure as hemoglobin. The only difference is the binding mineral, which is iron in hemoglobin yes. and then magnesium in and chlorella. And we know magnesium is one of the biggest deficiencies that we see in our society today. In fact, they say magnesium is to the body what oil is to a car. The yes. more stress we're under, the more magnesium we need. And chlorophyll is one of the best sources of just pure magnesium into the body. And so, um, so, so powerful. And then there's also a connection between the chlorophyll content that we're consuming in our diet and the sun, right? We know that, of course, yeah. plants are photosynthetic. So as long as they've got water, you know, soil with minerals, and then they've got their, their chlorophyll content along with getting sun exposure, they're going to be able to produce energy. And there's a, we have a great beneficial impact on our mitochondria when we're getting sun exposure, all the different rays, infrared, the, the ultraviolet, along with having uh, chlor chlorophyll basically in our diet. Yeah. Well, that's a great point. And, and um, we'll get to the mitochondria piece in a minute, but um, I just want to dwell a little bit on that chlorophyll for energy production, because also the blue phycocyanin in the spirulina does the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get too deep in the weeds for people who aren't too geeky, but when your body is creating or your mitochondria are creating this ATP, it, uh, the way it does it, it, it transfers electrons from these different stations. It's called the electron transport chain. And the way I help people understand what that is, is, you know, you've all seen relay races where uh, there's a series of runners. They have a baton and they pass the baton. They run a certain distance, pass it to the next runner who goes to the next distance. And then the goal is to cross the finish line first. Well, in your electron transport chain, it's very similar, except what's being passed along are electrons instead of a baton. And there's two things in that process that, that can either be sped up or, as you mentioned, uh, be a block, a break to that process. Now, one of them is a molecule, which you've probably heard of, called CoQ10. And, Co and the other one we're going to talk about is um, cytochrome C molecule. These are little helper, um, helper molecules that speed up. It's like having one of those runners suddenly get a jolt of electricity or something. So these little molecules speed up or slow down based on you know, what's available. So the CoQ10 molecule, what happens? is when your body has chlorophyll and you're exposed to red light, either sunlight or uh, red light therapy, it recycles the CoQ10 molecule so it speeds up and generates more energy automatically. But then if, if you don't have that access, this is one of the, the breaks that slows down the production of ATP. Now, remember, ATP is generates energy for everything. It's not just for running errands at the store or going for a great workout. It's walking, talking, sleeping, breathing, heartbeat, lymphatic system, everything. When you have more ATP energy, I tell people it's like money. You can, like, when you have more money, you can do more things and you have more choices. More ATP gives you better health, period. So the fact that the CoQ10 molecule is uh is uh, sped up in the production of ATP thanks to chlorophyll, which of course is in the highest concentration in chlorella, is pretty cool. Now the other little helper molecule is um and, and by the way, CoQ10 is a fat-based molecule. God bless Mother Nature, because she also gave us a water-based molecule called cytochrome C. That's the other helper molecule. Now the cool thing about cytochrome C is that it is triggered to move quickly by the blue pigment in um, spirulina. Remember, the, cl the chlorophyll is the pigment that speeds up the CoQ10 molecule. The blue pigment, called phycocyanin, speeds up that uh, cytochrome C molecule. So this is one of the other reasons why spirulina gives you so much energy because it speeds up that little helper molecule called cytochrome C, and it also has chlor chlorophyll in it. So it also speeds that one up too. But here's the really cool thing, and we'll get to this in, in deeper in, dive in a minute. If, you're, if your cell um, is either cancerous or a senescent cell, the blue pigment recognizes that and ejects the cytochrome C molecule, which then kills the cancer cell or the senescent cell. Talk about brilliant. This is mother nature at her best. It, and this blue pigment does not exist anywhere else in nature 
only in spirulina. So it's very selective. If you're healthy, it speeds up your energy for you. And we, we want that. If you're unhealthy, your cell is unhealthy, it kills it. Pretty sweet. In fact, the, the chemotherapy companies already use phycocyanin. So you could Google phycocyanin in cancer treatments and see that it's already being used. So how brilliant is that? Uh, but again, the blue pigment is damaged, destroyed by high heat. So this is why you don't get that benefit when you are buying a lesser quality, lower price algae. But um, I, I, people, you know, just say you must you're so in love with algae. And it's true because I have learned so much about what this these algaes do for us. Uh, don't think of them as something that's closing your favorite beach. Think of these as the answer to your health. And they're effortless in any whatever health condition you're in. It can be corrected. Um, but you have to give your body what it needs and remove what it doesn't. And whether it's, you know, improving your fasting window, improving your metabolic health, uh, improving, you know, getting off of diabetes or any kind of other ish, health issue, cancer, heart disease. These two, which are food, not drugs, not a supplement, gifted to us from Mother Nature, are your best solution. <laughs> yeah, really powerful stuff. And and with chlorella, in order to get the best absorption to it, needs to have a cracked cell wall. Is that correct? Can you explain yes. that? Yes. So um, as I mentioned, spirulina does not have a cellulose wall, so it doesn't have to be cracked to get access to all the nutrition. Uh, chlorella does have to be cracked because it has that very, very hard cell wall that would not allow the 40 vitamins and minerals and 60% protein to get to your body. So the FDA has regulated that all chlorella sold in America must be cracked cell wall. Other countries sell non-cracked, but I would say, why would you buy non-cracked? Because you're not going to get any of the nutrition. But the but to let you know, it's a it's a very complicated process. There's a company um, called Sun Chlorella, which I am very grateful to. They um, were the first company in Japan in the world, right, uh, to grow chlorella for mass consumption, and they figured out how to crack the chlorella. And what they did is they tumbled it with glass beads, um, uh, so it f physically smashed up the, the the cell wall. But the problem was that the the glass heats up and lead from the glass leaks into the chlorella and they they had some tests done and they their lead levels were too high now when i was starting the company i started the company i wasn't even starting a company i just wanted to help my sister who had breast cancer because our oncologist told her to change her diet to an alkaline diet so anyways everything we've done here is to improve people's health and to do things very thoughtfully and carefully when I learned there could be lead leaking into the chlorella uh, by the technique that everybody uses, because everybody uses that technique, I said, well, that's not going to work. We found a more modern and more expensive but effective way to crack the chlorella. And that's what we use. We, we pass it through a sound chamber. So it's vibrations that are cracking the chlorella, sort of like how an opera singer can crack a glass with a vibration. So I chuckled because somebody once said, oh, your chlorella's got good vibrations, very sort of <laughs> California, right? So, um, so anyways, that's just one more indication of the quality um, uh, that we and the, the level of detail that we go to because we don't sell anything but algae. That's it. I'm an algae expert. I'm an algae nutrition expert. And um, I, I'm very eager to help people understand the science of, um, of what it does and why it does it and how to uh, ensure you're getting the best quality. So that's another sort of nuance of the production. I tell people, Algae isn't like broccoli. It's more like wine. And wine is affected by the angle of the sun. It's affected by the way that you produce it, um, the, you know, the quality of the production. So is algae. So um, that's why I'm very proud of what we do. So we can, you can give our algae to your newborns, to your pets, to your grandparents, and know that it's the safest, most nutrient-dense food in the world. And as I mentioned, we do third-party lab tests here in the U.S. Um, by an FDA-approved lab. So, because we sell through doctors um, like you. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so it's, it's uh, uh, honestly... Um, our world, we're, we're in such a crisis. Uh, we're in an environmental crisis. We're in a health crisis. We're in a mental health crisis. Um, and all roads lead to the mitochondria to, to you know, protect everything. And all roads lead to algae to protect the mitochondria. And um, I'll, when I finish up, I'll, I'll also let you know that the your mitochondria, in fact, evolved from algae. So it's no surprise to me that they 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 um, 
they work really well together. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I love about algae and what you guys do is that it's really a functional food. And yes. we know that chronic disease is, is really toxicity and or deficiency. And most yes. people in our society are walking around too much toxins, like you talked about, and then they're also deficient. And in a sense, it's like a vicious cycle. The more toxic you are, the more you're going to have trouble absorbing nutrients, the more nutrient deficiencies you have, the more trouble you have detoxifying. And so you really need to hit both of those things. And that's really what the algae does. It detoxifies you while it provides key nutrients with minimal stress on your gut. And we know that, for example, like you were talking about vegetables, great source of nutrition. You know, I recommend people are eating vegetables, organic vegetables, grass-fed animal products, but at the same time, they're also stressful on the gut, right? In order yeah. to pull the nutrients out, some things have anti-nutrients, like we know a lot of different lectins. plants, spinach has oxalates, lectins, a lot of these anti-nutrients that can be stressful on the gut. With meat, you need good stomach acid production. A lot of people that are dealing with chronic disease are struggling to produce stomach acid in order to right. break it down and metabolize it. So with yeah. the algae, you don't need any of that. Yeah. It's just really like pure great. nutrition and, and detoxification with minimal stress on the gut. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning that because um, on the lectins and oxalates, for people who don't know what they are, they're in um, plants and particular plants like nightshade vegetables like tomatoes and red peppers have very high amounts of them. Almonds are very high in, in uh, spinach. spinach. Yep. And so the plants over evolved to develop these oxalates and lectins because they, they're very sharp proteins. They damage the stomach lining of animals and predators, just like they do us, and they taste terrible. So it keeps bugs and predators away from the plants. But algae doesn't have any lectins or oxalates because it's never been a land plant. It grew, it initiated out of the ocean. So, so whether you're a carnivore, paleo, vegan, you can have algae. It's zero carb, zero sugar, um, and it, it and the and it's not just what you eat; it's what you absorb, as you as you rightfully point out. And so, because the both algae, particularly spirulina, is the fastest nourishing food in the world, so it's putting nourishment in. And as you mentioned, people are missing. And chlorella pulls toxins out, so nourishment in, toxins out, and both of them nourish uh, your brain and your bot and your gut. And I was, uh, um, I've gotten to, I, I work a lot with the Brain Tap people. They have a device that helps your mm -hmm. brain uh, develop better neural pathways. And uh, they've done some research to show that when you, your when your brain is um, is also nourished and the pathways are healthy. You're, it, you are able to absorb 30% more nutrients. I thought that was fascinating because spirulina is really great for brain health. So again, it's remember I mentioned at the beginning, when your brain is working, you're going to have better digestion and better absorption. And so um, it just reconfirmed that um, their science um, says that as well. So it's pretty cool.